Hey gamers, it's Wintermute here from Grind This Game. Back with uh, Path of Exile. Kind of a beginner's guide, starting from the beginning. <laughs> and uh, kind of organized my stash a bit more here. Now this uh, special tab is a kind of a paid upgrade, and it's a currency tab. It's very handy, it lets you kind of organize all your different pieces of currency. Like, uh, for instance, if I put this orb of transmutation in here, it'll automatically stack in this special slot. But you don't need to use this tab, you could use just a regular slot and keep things organized. But since I have it, I'll be using it. And there's some other ones I have here. Armor, armor scraps are used for like improving armor. You get 1% out of each use. And alchemy shards eventually will lead to uh, alchemy orbs, which are used to turn a, a regular item, like a white item, which is the lowest uh, type of item, into a rare item. So there's white items, there's blue items, which are magic, like these ones. And there's golden ones, we, which we haven't seen yet, which are rare. And then there's epic or epic ones, which are orange. And then there's various types of currency that can um, let you modify those items. And I'll, I'll probably do a separate guide on that, but I thought I'd mention that. And I'll probably put this Quicksilver Flask, which lets us run faster, in my third slot. That's just where I usually put it. And I set up a tab here for quality. These name ta tabs are also a paid upgrade, but... So I'm going to take on the next two quests here. So, you managed to salvage Shaky Ant. He has one, and he has one. Got a job for you, if you're willing. So we'll head up the coast and into some new zones here. So all the flasks we have right now are um, kind of white vanilla flasks, but you can get magic ones as well, like this medium light flask. So we'll use a scroll of uh, wisdom to ID it and see what properties it has. So it recovers faster, and you get movement speed while, while it's uh, in use. So I'll swap that out for that one. So there's this help panel here, which has lots of good information about skill gems and kind of the stuff I'll be going over. Uh, just what I was talking about here. Rarity, normal, magic, rare, and unique. Waypoints, which I mentioned in the last episode. There's a lot of uh, good information in here about currency. So this orb of alchemy turns a white item, the lowest kind of level, into a rare with some kind of random qualities. All this tutorial stuff is pretty new, I think. It's really good that they added it. But not everything's in here, so we'll we'll talk about some of the things that aren't in there. Actually, well, I have these three here. I'll show you one of the recipes. Yes. So if I sell three of the same type of flask, it gives me the upgraded version of the flask. And that'll work for three of these, will give me the upgraded version of this, so... Sometimes it's worthwhile to keep your vanilla flasks. So we'll head up to the coast, and then up into this unknown zone here. The mud flats. This game's pretty nice looking. Summon up some zombies. There's a quest here where you have to collect uh, three of these little eggs. Oh, our first ring.
Okay, we got a few new items we haven't seen yet. So, these portal scrolls, if you, uh, we'll use it in a little while, but it, if you click it, it opens a portal to town, which is really useful. And we're not doing physical damage, but I'll wear this ring anyway. And this is a example of a three linked item, where all three slots are linked. There's uh, two link, three link, all the way up to six link. So some chest pieces and some uh, two-handed weapons and some shields have six of uh, these that are linked. They're very rare and they're very powerful. And I'll get into like linking items uh, in a future guide. This is a kind of a boss rare mob. One uh, useful kind of support gem, which comes later, is called, uh, I think it's called Lesser Multiple Projectiles. So for like this spell, if we had that as a support gem, it would allow us to shoot three things at once instead of one. And then there's one called Greater Multiple Projectiles, which if you link it, would give you five projectiles. So that would be a good kind of two link setup. And then a three link example of that might be uh, greater multiple projectiles plus uh, chaos damage, for instance, or more projectile damage. I don't. This isn't considered a projectile, though. But they basically keep layer on, layering on new magic properties, which help out. Now this item here, it has, it's a three link item, but it has three different colors, green, red, and blue. And you can sell this to a vendor and get a, a chromatic gem, which looks like this, a chromatic orb. So it's useful to keep these and turn them in. And superior items I usually pick up as well, because they can be turned in in bunches to give uh, some currency. Now there's a uh, loot filters which you can set up and I'll do a different guide on that as well. I'll briefly mention it in the settings here under options sorry so under options UI there's uh, item filters that you can import and I'm using one of uh, Ziggy D's he's got a really good loot filter what it does is it highlights items in certain ways so that they're easier to recognize. Like that chromatic one that we had, uh, this one. You'll notice there's a thin line around it, so it's easier to see. And certain really rare items will have a special sound when they drop so that you're, you don't miss them. You can also hide common items, which is really handy. Because later on in the game, there will be like so much loot on the ground. But you'll, you won't care about 99% of it, you'll only care about certain items. So those loot filters are really, really useful. I didn't actually start using them until, I don't know, hundreds of hours into the game. And then when I finally used it, I was just like, this is the best thing ever. So I hi highly recommend them. They're probably not as useful early game, but uh, once you start getting lots of items on the ground, they become really useful. So we're going to do this side quest, uh, a dirty job. It's an optional quest, but we're going to do it. These uh, just tell little stories and give lore about the game. Black storms descend on us from the north. Here's the side quest. The fetid pool.
Level six. Let's get uh, let's get our latest skill. More spell damage. Now I should mention you need a balance between damage and life. The more life you get, or energy shield, which is kind of so yeah, some builds are based on life, where you where you'll want to get a lot of life nodes, and some builds are built on energy shield, which is a different kind of thing. I've got a little bit of shield here, 17, but there's nodes that will let you uh, build up your energy shield. Like uh, let's find some over here. Usually a lot up by the uh, witch starting area. Here, energy shield and recovery. So it's kind of like health. It's basically, it gets used up before your health gets starting used up, but it regenerates, so just like life regenerates. But this will probably be a life based build. So you got to balance your life with your damage. If you take on just all damage, you'll be what people call like a glass cannon. And you'll be able to kill things, but you'll die pretty fast. So it's a good to take a mix of life and and damage. If you're playing on hardcore, people usually take on way more life or shielding because they don't want to die at all. I'm picking up these sashes because they, they can be used in certain vendor recipes. Here's the necromancer. This guy's a bit tricky because he keeps raising these uh, minions. Could be a bit annoying. But he's pretty easy. Now it's definitely worthwhile to pick up superior flasks. Because those can also be sold um, in groups to get a special item. Once I have enough, I'll show you that that recipe. If you just Google um, PoE vendor recipes, though, you'll see a lot of the special ones. I'm actually not wearing any belts, so I'm gonna put in. Oh, let's kill these guys first. Yeah, I have no belt on, so I'm gonna put on. I'm gonna toss that one. Get this chain belt. Which gives more energy shield, which we don't really need, but it's not too bad. So I'm going to use this uh, superior medium mana flask. Swap out this amulet. That one's a bit better. Now some of these shields also give uh, increased spell damage. And this one has more spell damage. So instead of using a uh, two wands, I'm going to use a shield and a wand. That way we get uh, some block chance and some energy shield and a little bit more spell damage. Now when you hit tab to open the map you can actually scroll around with the arrow keys which is kind of useful. This particular zone is a uh, kind of a circle so you can get out either way. Oh. So we cleared out all the monsters so this optional quest is done. Let's take on our next uh, skill. More spell damage.
Now the next quest is uh, breaking some eggs, which we already did. We got the three eggs in here, which uh, opens up, or the, the three eggs are used in the seal here, which kind of opens the way into uh, this area. And I went in because there's a waypoint here that we can activate. You need to touch it to activate it. And we'll head back to town and sell some stuff. Clear up, clear up our inventory. And turn in some quests. Now that you've drained that path. Oh, we got flame totem. So this is going to be a totem build, so I'm going to actually get flame totem. It's a pretty awesome skill. A necromancer. Just the one, was it? And you get these books. We don't have any sp oh, we can make some space here. So this one has two passive respect points. I've traveled inland on the Emperor. So if you right click it, it'll give you two respect points. And these are used to kind of undo any choices you've made in the skill tree. And I actually want to undo this one, I changed my mind about this. So you just go into refund passives up in the top here, click that. And click the skill you don't want. And then apply refunds. So that'll free up another point, which I'm going to use for this. Uh, these are called notable skills, the ones that are a bit bigger. And they have uh, s some better effects than your, your regular. So this one's only like 10% increased spell damage. This one's got quite a few things. More spell damage, more attack and cast speed, and 10 strength and intelligence. So we'll, we'll use that. So based on the build, uh, after this we'll go down in here, get some life, get this discipline and training, and head over here, maybe get this elementalist, and then go up here and get this light of divinity. Now I'll talk about resistances here briefly. So if you look at your character tab, which is under, just hit C and it'll open this up. You can see, if you go into the defense tab, you can see your resistances. So there's fire resistance, cold resistance, lightning resistance. And various mobs and bosses will do these three types of damage. These are the three elemental resistances. And then there's chaos resistance. There's a special type of damage called chaos damage, which goes right through energy shield. It's a little bit different than the other three. But you definitely want to get your resistances up as you go higher and higher level, and higher and higher in level. This will completely negate uh, the type of uh, like if you get if you're getting fireball cast on you and you have a higher fire resistance, it'll reduce a lot of the damage coming in. So these are really useful to get. So that'll block kind of magic damage, and then there's uh, armor which blocks physical damage, and then evasion is another type of defense which allows you to completely like dodge, like evade the uh, attack. And then under offense, offense you can see all your stats, like how much damage per second you're doing, your chance to hit attacks per second, etc. Also, if you hover over the tooltip for your main, for your spells, you can see your damage per second, DPS. Mine's 43 for right now for the skill. The mana cost and the cast time. And then any modifiers uh, that you might have due to uh, linked skill gems. You can also see it up here in this character window. Now, every character has three main stats. Uh, and this is a magic based build, so intelligence is going to be, I'm going to be having taking on more of it. And you can see here, for every two intelligence you get uh, one mana. And for every five intelligence you get 1% energy shield. So strength gives you more life. It also gives you more uh, melee physical damage. And then Dexterity increases your accuracy and increases your chance to evade. So we'll see if we sell this uh, green, red, blue item, we're going to get a chromatic orb. And chromatic orbs are useful. They can be used to change the socket color on an item. So let's say this one's all like three reds right now. 
but it gives you the chance to kind of roll different colors. Now some items are inherently red, like this club I think is tends to be red, so the chances of getting a green or a blue on this item are, are lower, but if you use enough chromatic orbs you'll get to get some color variation. I won't, I'll, I might as well just use one right now, even though it's a bit of a waste. So there we go, we got one blue and two red, and if you keep using these you'll get different random colors. I'm going to identify some of these items so I can sell them. You can sell them when they're unidentified, but you won't get as much currency for them. So if I try to sell this axe right now, I would get two transmutation shards. But if I go and ID it, and then try to sell it, I'll get five alteration shards, which are better. And you'll notice these two different uh, coral amulets. One has 3.4 life regenerated per second, and one has 2.4. These are just different rolls on the same kind of base type of item, and I think four is the maximum you can get. Now it's worthwhile to save mm -hmm. all of your rings, because they can be um, turned into magical rings or rare rings later on, and they can be used in sets, so it's just a generally a good idea to keep all your rings and amulets. So I'll just stash these in here, and I'll identify the one I have here. Now rem remember we have the secondary inventory slot here, so I like to load that up with uh, items that have three slots. Don't quite have... Since we can o only do two wands at once, instead of one wand and one scepter, I'll just do this. That way we can level up these gems even if we're not using them. And I'm going to sock up my flame totem. So we'll get back out there and uh, continue on with the questing in the submerged passage. So I'll sh show you the new skill I have, this flame totem. So if I put it down, it'll automatically cast for me. So it's pretty good. It generally annoys the uh, monsters and go monsters will go after it instead of me. And you can cast it kind of far away from you, so I can cast it off screen kind of far away. Like that. And that way I can kind of kill things before I even see them. It's a nice, nice thing about totems. Now the other reason I like totems is that I'm kind of lazy. And totems, you just plant them and they go and they kill everything for you, so you don't have to be pushing a bunch of buttons. It's also why I like summoner builds, where you can get a bunch of zombies and skeletons and they just go and kill everything for you. You just walk around. So if you don't like clicking a lot of buttons, it's uh, kind of a nice setup. I would say melee is my my least favorite just because you kind of kind of have to mash buttons a lot and unless you have a really defensive build you might have a higher head tendency to uh, die because you got to get up close and personal with the mobs so we got an optional quest for the flooded depths we're gonna go in there get that done Now those monsters we just killed, you gotta kinda be careful of them. They kinda charge up and then they kinda blast you with their attack. Always be sure to level up your gems. Oh yeah, I haven't been using my Quicksilver Flask, so if you hit three, it'll use the Quicksilver Flask, and it lets you run faster, as you can see. And it'll recharge pretty quickly, so you can kind of use it between monster packs. Just make sure you don't run into a giant pack of mobs. I 
I put it on item slot 3 just because it's easy for me to reach. So we got a dead end here. And if you happen to portal into town, it will recharge all your flasks for you. There's sometimes these hidden boulders which have little items in them. There's other skills later on that let you run faster, which can really help you uh, clear clear uh, out all the monsters and zones faster. I'm kind of pathetically slow right now. These little crab guys, if you hit them, see this guy, watch. Once you kill him, another one pops out, a different unshelled crab. It's kind of like two mobs in one, so you got to be careful about that. Now here's these charging ones. So watch them charge up and then hit us with their attack. Now this is a special mob for the challenge league. Did a number on this? More skill point. So let's take on. Uh, let's, let's get some more. Let's get some life. Oh, a rare item. So this getting knife is rare. Okay. Oh, here's the boss mob for this zone. The deep dweller. Another rare item. Bosses more typically will drop these rare items. So I'm going to portal back and sell some of the stuff. And I'm also going to buy an item while I'm here, I think. We can buy yeah. rings. So I'm going to buy a... Uh, notice these coral rings? Like this one has plus 23 to maximum life for three sc scrolls of wisdom. And the one right below it, same cost, but it has plus 29. So you want to make sure you get the highest one. And each time you kind of reload the game and come back in, uh, these can sometimes randomize. So I'm going to get this maximum life one. And I'm just going to stash stash a lot of the stuff to free up space in here. I'll turn on this quest. You managed to kill a granddaddy crab. A pity you could... And we get a... Sometimes you'll get skill points as a reward. Stay sharp out there. Normally you only get a skill point when you're leveling up. But uh, in this case we got a little book that gives us a skill point for, as a reward. So let's actually use it. Uh, we'll go get discipline and training. Which is increases... This is a bit confusing. There's a, a maximum life and then there's increased percentage increase. So plus 30 maximum life increases kind of your base life and if you go under, if you hit C and look at your so notice our life is uh, 207 and if we add this ring which is 29 we should go up to 236 but we actually go up to 240 because we have some amount of base life and then we have uh, some we have this new these two new nodes which add 5% uh, life and another 10% uh, life. So base life is actually quite uh, powerful. If, you've, if you're if you a life based build and you have a lot of base life and a lot of these uh, percentage increase they can work really well together. So a plus 30 life on an item might actually end up giving you uh, like 600 life depending on what kind of percentage bonuses you have. Oh yeah, and when you make a portal to town, it only lasts uh, so long. I think it's about five minutes before it'll fade away. So make sure your trips to town are fairly quick. Oh! We got a rare item, which is very rare. <laughs> and it's uh, our kind of item, it's a goat's horn. I don't have uh, any ID scrolls yet, but we'll, uh, we'll ID it once we get one. Notice it had a special sound when it dropped.
blue mobs are um, a little bit harder. Magic, they're just magic mobs. They're a little bit harder than white mobs. White monsters. I think I've already gone this way. Oh yeah, this is a. Uh, there's only one way out of this zone. Now we can ID that item. Let's see what it is. Goat's horn. Wow. So increased spell damage, 22% increased fire damage, adds fire damage, increased global crit critical strike chance, life gained on killing ignited enemies. Pretty awesome. Okay, so let's uh let's equip that. Oh, we actually have this rare one as well. So we'll ID that once we get another identification scroll. Now this tooltip damage down here, when you hover over your spell, right now I'm seeing 94.9 damage per second. It doesn't always take into account all the modifiers of an item. So like this adds five to nine fire damage. Oh, that would that would include it. But but there's basically some modifiers that you won't be able to see it in your raw tool tip damage. So sometimes this tool tip damage will be understating or overstating, actually understating what your actual damage is. God bless you on this fine day, exile. Now this is a lore master and these will kind of randomly appear in dungeons. And if you do their quests, they'll um They'll take you into like a sub area sometimes and you'll do their quest and you'll build reputation with them. And once you have enough reputation with uh, Lore Master, you can get them to build a, a base for you, a hideout. So you'll see, to earn a personal hideout, help a master with missions until they reach level three, and then talk to them in town. So whenever you see these guys, it's, it's probably worthwhile, this, my prayers are worthwhile to do their quest. And in this one, it looks like we have to defend for a certain amount of time, for one minute, and protect this uh, thing in the middle. This, this one can be a little bit more hectic. And as you get higher and higher level, these can become really difficult. So if we click on him, that was some damn divine slaughter. You can see reputation here. So we're level one. Once we get to 430, we'll get to level two with this guy, Elron. And it looks like there's a help menu that talks about uh, forsaken masters. And they also talk about vendor recipes, which is something I mentioned earlier. So three flasks of the same type get your upgraded flask. Um, Handing in items which, uh, like armor items, which add up to 40%, will get you uh, armor scrap. And like I mentioned, this chromatic orb. I'm glad they added this to the game. This is super helpful. Uh, turning in a whole set of over a certain item can give you an orb of chance. And if you uh, turn in a set of, uh, I think it's rare items over level 60, you can get a chaos orb. It doesn't look like they're showing all the recipes, but they're showing um, quite a few of them. And if you Google like vendor recipes PoE, you'll get the full list. Now we're at the end of this zone, and there's one thing I want to show you here. Sometimes you'll want to uh, you'll want to do a zone over and over many times just to kind of get experience, get items, and level up before you uh, go on to more difficulty. And one way to kind of do a zone over and over is to, if you hit down, if you hold down control and click on a zone like this, it'll allow you to create a new instance of a zone. And you can create, I think, up to five of these, uh, kind of in a row. So we can go to the zone, clear it all out, 
go back out, hit control, click, and then create a new one. And we'll be able to re-clear the whole zone. And the ledge, the zone we're in right now, is very common for kind of power leveling. Because it's just one long line. So you can start at one end, uh, go all the way through the zone, kill everything, and then reload it and do it again and again and again. And there's a few key zones that are good for power leveling like this in kind of each act. There's also a good number of mobs in this zone, so that makes it also good. Lots of packs of monsters. I am no beast of burden. This looks like one of those special deadly guys. He's got a crazy name. <laughs> Needs some kind of weird character name. And we leveled up somewhere in there. So I'm gonna get elemental damage as my next skill. And in the middle of the zone is a waypoint, which makes it really handy. Don't forget to click on it. And I think I'm gonna wrap up this episode. Covered uh, quite a few topics. And nice place to stop because we got a waypoint. So next episode we'll continue on to the ledge and we'll try to get to uh, Prisoner's Gate. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.